Blog Talk Radio. DB the plug. Never off of my toes, I've been opening doors, I don't follow I lead, once I'm done I want more, I ain't copping no plea, little nigga get yours, gotta watch how you move around, remember niggas get bored, understand I'm the nigga you on bet against, never been satisfied, I ain't settling, can't be wasting all my time, I invested in niggas be really fair enough pedestrian, I ain't ready so the money ready, murder on my mind like a melee, but I'm only killing minutes nigga, watch it go down like a fetty, I'm just trying to make my name a whole monument, leave my tracks so my family can follow it, and this world keep on testing my tolerance, I'm I get it, I don't care for acknowledgement, yeah, I live by the basics, niggas living in the matrix, yeah. trying to be something that you're not, is fucking pitiful and tasteless, Please. never off of my toes, I've been opening doors, I don't follow, I lead, once I'm done, I want more, I ain't copping no plea, little nigga get yours, gotta watch how you move around, remember niggas get bored, I don't talk for my health, gotta understand when I'm absorbing this wealth, yeah, I'm all about self, but I give you this game so you won't fail, when it come to my mind, only way I'm gonna lose is wasting my time, feel like I'm in my prime, I didn't beat every trial, cutting off ties, I'm immune to this shit, I'm just trying to get rich, I ain't trying to get lit, niggas call up on that, but losing to this, that don't make any sense, gotta stay away fast, put that energy, try to get on my ass, when they talking less facts, I just look at these fucking fools and just laugh, they ain't never gonna get it, let them drown in it, let them drown, we don't never get the attention to all that clown shit, they clown. I was lost, but now a nigga know that he found it, he found. got me taking in certain things to build my knowledge, Never off of my toes, I've been opening doors, I don't follow, I lead, once I'm done, I want more, I ain't copping no plea, little nigga get yours, gotta watch how you move around, remember niggas get bored. And yes, yes, yes. This is Mo De Niro of Atlanta Cosmopolitan Magazine. You have just heard Doors by Detroit Young Boss, a.k.a. Detroit YB, who is live on the line with us tonight. It's such a pleasure, man. I love that. The bass in that was killing it. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule uh, to be on this show. It means a lot to us. So we're going to kind of just dive. Hey, it's my pleasure. Uh, We are going to just dive right into it. Um, First of all, let's talk about your name because your moniker gives us an idea of where you are from. Just give us a little insight Mm -hmm. on how uh, Detroit you know, uh, has impacted your image and your style? Um, Detroit is its own culture in itself, to be honest. Um, you get a lot of music, uh, definitely a lot of um, things going on in Detroit that influence my music. Um, as far as growing up in the city, I grew up in a very rough area, east side of Detroit. So I've seen a mm-hmm. lot of things. I've seen people, I've seen murders, I've seen drug dealing, I've seen basically it all. So, um, you know, going through that, that trauma experience, you know, it definitely reflects my music. And it's just a culture. We just have our own little culture. So that's what mm-hmm. like, drives my music. You know what I'm saying? That's why Detroit is so embedded in, in me. That's why I put it in my first name. So people would know, right, when you say my name, where I'm from, you ain't even got to ask. It's just right there. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Now, you mentioned, of course, that you're from Detroit um, and you're right. a transplant in Atlanta, which is very similar to my story. I understand uh, about the murder, the crime. What part of Detroit did you live in? I know you said the east side, but where where did you grow up at? Um, I grew up on the street called Cashew. Um, most people in Detroit mm-hmm. would know Cashew at East Warren, like Cashew East oh, Warren side. Yeah. That's like the Over deep by east city, side baby. of Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Over by Finney High and School. And Finney's not even mm-hmm. there. Finney's not even there no more. That's just crazy. Finney, they tore Finney down. Are you Sorry. serious? They did. Shut they did. Up. Like I want to say, I want to say, ten or fifteen years ago, they tore, they tore it down. It's a whole new school now. You yeah, can tell so. I am like a centurion. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Wow. Right. <laughs> well, right. This is amazing. Um, I love that because I'm able to identify then 
with a lot of um, just, you know, your history um, in terms of what's driving you and pushing you. Now, you have transplanted. I call it transplanted. You're an official AT alien now. You're living in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Tell me what, you know, what's going on with that? How has that transition been like for you? Um, it hasn't been easy. Um I mm-hmm. never really would have thought I would have moved out of Detroit, especially so soon. I moved out of Detroit by, like around the age of 23, 24. I'm 29 now. But um, mm-hmm. it wasn't easy. Like, I came here. I had family here and stuff. But I basically had to deal with, you know, everything by myself. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't mm. an easy road coming here. I, I was homeless for a good minute. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, it, it all worked out. You know what I'm saying? I just had to push through and I had to believe in myself and believe that I can right. you know, be one of them be one of them dudes from my hood to get out the city and actually, you know, travel the world and see other things. That's basically what I strive to do. So and I'm doing it now. So like I just moved back here from LA. So I just been moving around. Wow. So you actually went out to LA? That's quite a uh like a one eighty, you know, going from Right. Uh, Detroit to Atlanta to LA. What LA. made you move back? Yeah, what made you move back to Atlanta from LA? Well, LA is a whole different like country in itself. I would say because mm-hmm. it's like mm. uh, it's, it's, it's always something going on there. Like I feel like there's like five to ten years before anybody else, any other state in the United States. Like it's just different there and. You know, right. the living expenses is very high. So you have to really, you know, be financially stable to even, you know, be there, really. Right. And it's just very expensive. That's really why I moved back. But as far as opportunity, I still have opportunity out there. I still go back from Atlanta to L.A. to do work and stuff like that. So it's always opportunity. It's just I moved back because of living and stuff like that. It's cheaper to live here. But but also the hospitality here is way better than L.A. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta oh, has yeah. better hospitality than L.A. Definitely. Definitely. And they're very open to uh, up-and-coming artists. And I think as far as what you were saying, L.A. is a different – It's just a, it, even though it's in the United States, they've got their own thing going on. But, yeah, uh, they've the got their own thing going on. Yeah, definitely. And the opportunities in Atlanta are, they're never ending. And I say that uh, knowingly. So uh, I think you made a great decision. Now, I wanted to talk to you also because, first of all, I'm very impressed by a number of things. Um, Number one, what you just stated uh, and, you know, we're very transparent about in terms of the things you've gone through, um, you know, and, where you think that you are definitely headed. I won't even say think, but where you are headed. Um, right. You also are an entrepreneur uh, and an artist, so you have a, co- a company uh, which deals with publishing and entertainment right. called Hustle right. by Any Beans. Talk about that and how that happened, how that came about. Um, it's crazy. Um, I used to be in a group. Um, Before we um, called ourselves Lyrical Militia, we went by Mm -hmm. um, HBAM, which is Hustle by Any Means. It originated for me from Malcolm X, um, how Malcolm X Mm. is by any means necessary. I just put the hustle by any means and put the necessary off and just made it my own. So it kind of stemmed because I'm definitely a Malcolm X follower. That's like one of my Mm -hmm. favorite activists. And um, that's basically where the name came from. And, you know, by any means necessary, like, no matter what, uh, we hustle. Like, that's just our motto. So, like, um, hmm. after I, I, after the group thing, like, because we never used it, we just used it for a second and changed our name. I just decided to use it and make it into my own thing and flourish from there. But that's where it originated from, to be honest. I see. I see. So, yeah. why Malcolm? X. Let's let's talk about that. Why why was he your chosen icon of choice or leader of choice? He was just he was blunt. He didn't have no filter. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. like that's just my person personality. Like 
that's how I come about a thing, especially truth. Like things that I feel like need to be exposed. Like I'm very blunt and I'm very, and I and I try not to have any type of filter when I talk about things because people need to know things. Like especially dealing with life and stuff like that. So I just seen how he just, you know, yeah, he just unfiltered. Like the way he he speak and the way he talk about different pro, um, topics with the African American community and stuff. He was just unfiltered, mm-hmm. and I love that about him. You know what I'm saying? Even my, even Martin Luther King had some filter, but Malcolm X mm-hmm. just was, he just put it all out on the table and let people know what it really was, and, and that's how he carried himself, and that's how I carried myself. So. That is fantastic, because he was very unapologetic. You know, he said exactly. what he said, and he meant what he said, and that was the end of that. So um, I definitely exactly. respect that a lot. Um, so... We just listened to Doors, um, which is a song of yours. Loved it. I love just everything about it, the tone. I love the music. I love the beat. Um, what was the concept behind that, and what does that mean to you, that song? Um, ever since I've, you know, anything that I do or, you know, whatever I put my mind to, like, I'm a leader in it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it's Going back to the group thing, like when we was in a group, I made sure we had everything. I made I made sure I promoted for us. I made sure I got us on, the, try to get us on at least Detroit map. You know what I'm saying? As mm-hmm. Quickly as possible. So it's just like I was very ambitious in getting us out there, and you know that's just how I I view things. I feel I view like I just I'm, I open doors for people. I open doors for myself, and that's just how. I, I go about life. Um, that song really came about. Um, I had when I was coming back from LA, back to Atlanta, mm-hmm. on the road. I had lost my music. I had lost my hard drive, my MacBook, all my music that I've done in the years. I've lost it. So it wow. really discouraged me. Yes, it really discouraged me, and it made me not want to do music anymore. And I don't know. It's just something like when Nipsey Hussle does it. Came it. Can it kind of gave me a, a spark again. To like really mm-hmm. like push the narrative and push myself to make better music. So Doors is just like a new version of me. Like it's, it's wow. different to, from what the music I have made before is different now. Like it's just what I talk about is different. I just talk about the future and I make sure I speak um, existence into my music. That's what this is what Doors is speaking existence. Wow, into my I music. love that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. manifestation. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, manifestation, I'm big on that. Um, I'm big on business. I'm big on vision. Um, and I definitely see that you have a lot of that. Um, I definitely, I'm going to go back just a little bit because I was reading your website. And uh, first of all, let me compliment you on that because I'm a big advocate for the business side of hip hop. And I think it is so crucial how you present yourself. Um your website is phenomenal. I mean, it is really, really well done. Um, so you I just it. wanted to compliment you on that because that is something that is very serious. People look at that. Um, and, right. you know, they, they know the difference from someone who really cares about their image, their presentation. Um, you know, it just makes a difference. So I really uh, commend you on that. Um, but I do want to go back because, Something really touched me about your story in your bio. It says that you grew up with a single teenage mother and grandparents um, and that Mm -hmm. you were neglected by a biological father or your biological father. Um, But you were blessed to have a stepdad who uh, basically came in and kind of changed your life and introduced you to uh, some uh, some equipment, basically, you know, that allowed you to right. own your craft. Do you want to talk about that uh, just for a minute and how instrumental that was to your life? Um, yeah, that's crazy. That's, um, that that story is, in itself is what what makes me me, you know what I'm saying, or what mm-hmm. I am today. Like, what I've learned from him is what I take in everyday life, you know what I'm saying, Um he really mm-hmm. got me into music. He was really a good drummer. He was like a drummer's drummer. He was um, more so into gospel music than 
any mm-hmm. other music. Um, but he made beats and he was like worldwide. Like the last before he even died, because he died um, 2008. Before he died, he went to London and they was bra- mm. embracing him with open arms in London. They wanted like our whole family to move to London. And we were going to be rich wow. and everything, but he just didn't want to be away from his family. That's the only reason he didn't want to move. So, but mm-hmm. um, but. Yeah, he was very instrumental into my life. Um, before I used to rap, I used to make beats. Um, that's where he he had this machine called the R seven thousand. He used to make beats mm-hmm. on him and stuff. And I would always be around him, or you know, what I'm saying when he was doing it, and like he kind of taught me a few things. And I kind of like started making beats first, then before I started rapping. Like when I was in high school, wow. I always used to be the one that's beatboxing and stuff. While my friends were freestyling, I never was the one freestyling. I was just the one beatboxing and stuff, and. Whenever they needed beats, I had beats for them for free. I never used to sell beats. I wasn't like a full-time producer. It was just a hobby mm-hmm. for me, and I, I loved it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when um he ended up dying, it kind of took a toll for me because how he died, he had right. aneurysm in his brain. And mm. um, he died, like, um he fell out on the court. He was playing basketball, and he just naturally fell out and just naturally died. So it's mm. just crazy how that happened because I was really into basketball as well, too. And I just stopped really wow. doing everything. Like, I stopped playing basketball. I stopped making beats. I stopped really doing everything for a minute because he was like my GPS when it came to that, right. like my navigation assistant. So, like, it, it really took a toll on me. I had to really pull myself mm-hmm. back together by myself. Like, I, I, it was hard because I, I didn't really talk to nobody while I was in college. I was in college when I, when I was, like, freshman in college when all this was going mm-hmm. on. And I really didn't talk to nobody. I really just had to pull myself up, and that's how, like, the group thing happened because I started off rapping in a group before I started solo, so that's how the group thing mm-hmm. happened. One of my friends was like, just rap, you know what I'm saying, just vent, vent it out. You might you might feel better, and it worked. Like, that's, it was a way right. to express myself, you know what I'm saying? So, because like, as, as a kid, to be honest, as a kid, I was a little shy. I didn't really talk to nobody. I didn't really, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, converse like that, but... As I got older and, you know, understanding life and stuff like that, it really, yeah, I really started opening up more. And then music and rapping helped me with that. It's like therapy for me. So that's why I love That music. is incredible. That's incredible. So the loss of someone who was that instrumental in your life really took a toll on you and caused you to kind of shut down. But at the same token, yeah. you at some point, uh, were able to see enough uh, of this situation to utilize a tool that has you where you are today. Right. That's exactly. incredible. So I want to honor his name, if you don't mind. You don't have to give his last name, but uh, I do like to honor um, men who step up, who stand up. If you would like to just drop you know, his name, we can go ahead and do that in honor of his memory. Yeah, his name is David Modak. Um, yeah, this is his name, David Modak. He's a drummer, drummer. All right. And, well, um, yeah. Big ups, big ups to him, absolutely. All right, and so I also want to give credit um, to your mom because I read also that, um, well, your grandmom actually, you said that she was actually playing 90s rap, which actually included all of the iconic – a uh, hip hop art artists like Tupac, Biggie, KRS One, Ice Cube. Tell me about those influences in your own music because it's very unique. Oh um, man, like um, Tupac is like one of my all time favorite artists. Um, just how versatile he is. He, of course, he they people like want to you know categorize him as gangster rap, but he was mm-hmm. like literally. Uh, a, a life rapper, like he talked about life like more than anything, and that's what mm-hmm. drove me into his music. Like just the different melodies he had and, the, and how aggressive he was on the track, I kind of like right. implemented that and in, into my own because I'm very aggressive when I when I rap or when I speak, and I got that kind of from him and his style. And as far as Ice Cube too, Ice Cube is like the same way. Ice Cube wasn't as mm-hmm. versatile as Tupac, but Ice Cube still had that aggression and. I love that in music. Like it's just I don't know, it just mm-hmm. does something to me when when I hear that. So 
Yeah, like when I was listening, like, yeah, my, my family, as far as my grandma and my auntie or my uncle, I always heard, you know, rap, and that's what kind of got me in tune. And it's crazy because it, the words didn't really resonate with me at first. It was the beat. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I used to, like, really love the beat. Like, that's what really got me into music, the beat, the instrumental. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then mm-hmm. when I start learning things about life and learning about lyrics and stuff, that's when I was into wordplay and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, they, they have very, very, you know, um, they're very instrumental into my music and my life right now. So, yeah, big up That is Tupac. incredible. That's cute. That's incredible. That's incredible. And especially because you are from Detroit, uh, born and raised, and um, you're part of the whole Motown mixture. Um, I just think that that's an uh, incredible vibe that you have. Um, so it actually actually adds to everything that you're doing right now. Um, so I also want to talk about, because you've had, you've been in the eyesight of some uh, major producers and companies. Um, the last thing that I was reading um, is that you actually were part of a, well, you had caught the eye of, one of the labels that are owned by Bone Thugs and Harmony. So oh, yeah. mm-hmm. just just very briefly, because we're not going to absorb too much time, how did that help you understand the music business? Um, well, when I got in contact with them, it was through my cousin. She was working mm-hmm. as one of the A&Rs for that company. Um, and that's when I was in a group. Um, we when we was in the group, we was recording a lot of songs, but we didn't have any type of platform, or we didn't really mm-hmm. know where to start. And that's where Detroit Motors came in. They um they they didn't even sign us yet. They wanted to get get us through like a five song EP, and then if mm-hmm. we like what we saw or we like what we experienced, then we was gonna sign. So like yeah, it definitely showed me the business side as much more so any than the music side to anything. Like I seen how they how people operate business. People operate business differently, of course. But I just seen it from the outside looking in. Of you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, everything, the politics and, and music and stuff like that. And that's what got me into really researching and understanding the music business side. Because it's it's mostly ninety percent business and ten percent music yes. in the music industry, to be honest. So Absolutely. you have to know that. And being a young artist coming up and starting off, I didn't know that. I just wanted to do the music. You know, I just wanted to mm-hmm. rap. That's all I really wanted to do. So I just had to doing going through that, it definitely um it definitely made me more aware of the business side and want me I need to I need to learn more than what I knew. So that definitely helped me. Wow. But we never like ended up signing with them. We just mm-hmm. appreciated the um, yeah the, the lessons they taught us and everything. But we never signed with them. We just did our own thing after that. Absolutely, absolutely. Sometimes those lessons are the most valuable. Um, getting signed Definitely. to a label doesn't doesn't mean that you're going to be instantaneously rich or wealthy. Um, there's a you know there's a lot of caveats to this business um, and learning the exactly. business. Art first is the is a critical component. So um, I want to also talk about some other things, personal things. And you don't have to go too much into detail, but I know that you ended up for a minute in the streets and getting in trouble. And it's understandable, you know, given the history mm-hmm. of some of the things that were happening. Um, right. W- once you uh, actually. Just yeah. say, we'll just say, it. once you actually got a chance to come out of jail, um, how did that actually transform that experience, transform your life to make you want to change for good? Um, when I, well, yeah, when my stepfather died, um, like I said before, like I felt like I lost my GPS, my navigation mm-hmm. system. Um, we didn't have the, and, and don't get me wrong, we didn't. I, I love my stepfather. We didn't have the best relationship when he was here, sure. but he definitely was very. He taught me like everything. So mm-hmm. when he went away, it just felt like I lost. Like I didn't have anything. You know what I'm saying? It's like God, what you want me mm-hmm. to do? Like he, you didn't. Right. You didn't get. You didn't give me the first father, and the first, the second one, you just killed. So 
what what, mm. what do you want me to do? And it just it, it had me it had me in a space to where I was just didn't give a fuck about anything. Like I just did what mm-hmm. I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I started being in the streets more while I was in college. Um, my mom don't even know. My mom probably listening right now. She don't even know this, but I started being mm-hmm. in the streets a lot. Um, started getting into trouble. Right. Started selling drugs while I was in college just to just because I, I I didn't give a fuck no more. I didn't really care. You right. know what I'm saying about anything. So. That's what the mindset I was in, and you know, going in jail, going to jail was definitely a good thing. I know it that sounds crazy, but it was definitely a good no, thing because it, it set me down. Right. It set me down mm-hmm. and made me think about the things that I was doing and how it was affecting my siblings. You know, my I got three siblings that look up to me, so mm-hmm. it's like anything that I do, they they don't have their father no more. That was their father. They died. That wasn't my. Right. That was just my stepfather. That was their actual father. So it's like mm-hmm. they they look for you know, the next leading man, and that's what I was. So I couldn't right. keep going to jail and stuff like that. I had to make sure I had to get myself right so they could see and they could, you know, duplicate that. I don't want them going down any road that I went through. So it's, it's good that I went through that so, like, I could teach them on their little path in life, not well, on what not to do and what to do. Definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I respect that. I respect that so much. You have no idea. Well, let's go ahead and fast forward then. Uh, let's talk about your current project. Um, let's talk about where you are now in your recording, uh, what project is actually available right now, and what your vision is for 2020. Um, the project that my last project I released um, last year, 2018, is called Hustle Season. Uh-huh. Um, basically, um, basically just showing showing the world that you know hustling is a, well, just the showing my my growth in the music business and coming out the streets and coming where I come from and how I just hustle. It's just that whole tape is just a motivate a motivational tape, I would say. Like anybody that mm-hmm. don't don't know what to do is just I make sure I implement hustle into that tape. So anybody listening probably be motivated to hustle. That's the whole point of the, of making the tape. So I just need Excellent. that for not even everybody else. I need that for myself, you know, to keep myself motivated. Because mm-hmm. I feel like you know more than anybody, I motivate myself more than anybody else motivate me. So absolutely, that tape, um, absolutely. that's the last tape that I had. Um, Excellent. So, um, and what platform a, can we find those? Go ahead. On? What um, platform anything, can um, we find that on? iTunes, Spotify, anything digitally. Um, before when I released it, before I had mixtape shirts. Um, I had like the tape cover on mm-hmm. the shirt, and I had like QR codes on the sleeves. So I would pass them out while I was in LA. I made like 500 shirts, and I passed them out. So you wow. know, I had a whole bunch of mixtape shirts. And but like that's the, like the only like physical thing that we did. We didn't have no CDs or nothing because nobody really use CDs nowadays. They they right. they on their phone or they they on iTunes or they on Spotify. You know what I'm saying or Title. Mm-hmm. So we had to make right. sure we, you know, put that out there in physical form so they could just scan it off the shirt and they get a free shirt. I didn't even charge for the shirt. Just get a free shirt. Just scan that's it off crazy. the shirt. That's crazy. Yeah. Five hundred shirts. That's an entrepreneurial move right there. Absolutely. That's an entrepreneurial move. And what about right now where you are? Where are you right now? Well, right now, um, I just released a single. It's called Pan Out. It's just something to test the waters. Um, Mm -hmm. I would just categorize that as a club radio record. Um, It's not really Mm -hmm. much thought put into Pan Out. But what I'm working on now is an album. Um, it's called Be- it's going to be called Beauty in the Struggle, and just mm. basically the whole meaning of the tape is that yeah we struggle we and we go through pain and stuff but there's still beauty in it mm-hmm. like we still learn lessons through our struggles no matter what we're struggling in like you can come up out of it and learn from it and that's the beauty mm-hmm. it. so that's that's why I called it Beauty in the Struggle and like I said like I lost all my music coming back from from um, L A. And so, like, mm-hmm. I just I just figured that that was God telling me to change my subject to make it more mm-hmm. for people that to you know to relate to basically like not talk about the past as much and 
focus more mm-hmm. on the future. So that's why. Wow, that's, that's why I'm calling it that. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. So for anybody who is listening right now, I love to ask artists to make sure that they are, uh, you know, giving people advice from their perspective. If you were giving Definitely. information or if you were just giving someone in the industry or just some young up and coming whatever they are um advice, what would you be, what would you tell them right now? Um upcoming rappers? Anybody. Rapper, anybody? artist, entrepreneur, anybody. Mhm. I would I would just the main thing that I would tell them it was to just be themselves. Like literally, like mm-hmm. Um, in my journey in music, um, at one point in time, I would make music for other people. Like I would make music mm. for the uh, the next era, be, instead of my instead of my era. Like I would make it so other people would. would if, if, I, I would make music if other people liked it. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't make it mm-hmm. for me. I made it, try to make it for them. And that's not what you do. Like you just be yourself. Like whatever you right. feel, do it. Like go with your gut feeling. Don't don't be so influenced by everybody else's opinion because it might not be right. You know what I'm saying? I, I would say follow your opinion because that might be God talking to you. If you follow your gut, that Absolutely. might be God talking to you. And that's, that's how I would, that's why I would tell somebody coming up, just be yourself. And anything you do, just be yourself. That's the Incredible. easiest route instead, instead of trying to, you know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to, right. you know, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that is phenomenal uh, advice, true advice. Um, for anybody who is listening, how can they find you on social media? Um, well, I have a Twitter, Facebook. You can find me at Detroit YB. You can Google me, Detroit YB. My Instagram is Detroit YB Hustle. Um, I have a, a website, DetroitYB.com. Just look up Detroit YB. You can find me. Google me. You can find me everywhere. It'll be all lined Absolutely. up. Absolutely. <laughs> this has been Such an incredible and insightful interview, sir. I really thank you for your time from the bottom of my heart. Everybody, we have been blessed to interview uh, Detroit Young Boss, a.k.a. Detroit YB. Make sure you are looking him up on his social media platforms and connecting with him. We're going to close out the show with doors just like we started Sir, I do believe that every door that you go through will be a good one and a successful one. Mm -hmm. I wish you well in your adventures. I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining us here at Atlanta Cosmopolitan. My pleasure. You have a great night. You too. Thank you. DB the plug. Never off of my toes, I've been opening doors, I don't follow I lead, once I'm done I want more, I ain't copping no plea, little nigga get yours, gotta watch how you move around, remember niggas get bored, understand I'm the nigga you on bet against, never been satisfied, I ain't settling, can't be wasting all my time, I invested in niggas be really fair enough pedestrian, I ain't ready so the money ready, murder on my mind like a melee, but I'm only killing minutes nigga, watch it go down like a fetty, I'm just trying to make my name a whole monument, leave my tracks so my family can follow it, and this world keep on testing my tolerance, I'm I don't care for acknowledge me, I yeah, I live by the basics Niggas living in the matrix yeah. Trying to be something that you're not is fucking pitiful and tasteless Please. Never off of my toes, I've been opening doors I don't follow, I lead Once I'm done, I want more I ain't copping no plea Little nigga, get yours Gotta watch how you move around, remember niggas get bored I don't talk for my health, gotta understand when I'm absorbing this wealth Yeah, I'm all about self, but I give you this game so you won't fail When it come to my mind, only way I'm gonna lose is wasting my time Feel like I'm in my prime, I didn't beat every trial, cutting off ties I'm immune to this shit, I'm just trying to get rich, I ain't trying to get lit Niggas call up on that, but losing to this, that don't make any sense Gotta stay away fast, put that energy, try to get on my ass When they talking less facts, I just look at these fucking fools and just laugh They ain't never gonna get it, let them drown in it Let drown. We don't never get the attention to all that clown shit they clown. I was lost, but now a nigga know that he found it he found. Got me taking in certain things to build my knowledge Never off of my toes, I've been opening doors I don't follow, I lead, once I'm done, I want more I ain't copping no plea, little nigga get yours Gotta watch how you move around, remember niggas get bored